Hello everyone, I wanted to share with you today a quick project you could do for Father's Day. And this is a nice little frame, folds over, and then inside there's room then to put um, two six bottle photographs. You can just slide down the back there. And I've made this for Father's Day. So on here I put Grandad because I thought the children could put a picture of themselves inside here to give us a gift for Father's Day. So it's very quick and easy to make. So I'll go ahead and make one with you now. So I'll pop this one to one side. So for this, all you're going to need is two sheets of craft A4 um, cardstock. This is a very thick uh, GSM. I think it's about a 220, so it's not too thick. And then I've just got a piece of um, packaging. This has come from just some packaging I had. Just a little bit of stiffness again, just to put in the middle but um, I'm just using what I had lying around rather than buying something new and luckily that's in a nice craft colour as well so it matches with the project so this is where I never like to throw anything away I'm going to be using the e-bosser today and also a die as well for this so the first thing we need to do is to cut the cardstock down to 7 inches so just bring the arm of my trim her out. I just wanted to try and get everything in camera shot for you. It's a very quick project to make so uh, just quite nice as a man's gift and also if you're stuck for something quick for Father's Day so that's why I thought this would come in very handy. So we're going to cut the first one down at seven inches. While I've got the trimmer out I'm going to cut this one down to six and three quarter inches. And then I need to cut this then down to five inches. And I need to have two at that measurement. And these are going to be for the frames. Okay, so I've cut those both down so I can put those to one side for a minute. Don't need those just yet. And that's just the waste there, so I can pop that to one side. First thing I'm going to do, if you remember from the frame, I've done a nice um, textured frame back on this and all I've done is use an embossilicious um, folder. This one is called Cable Knit, so I thought it's quite nice for a man, it looks like a nice woolly jumper. So that's what I'm going to use in here, but obviously you can use anything you like really, but these, these embossing folders are great because they're A4 in size, so perfect. Um, you can emboss or deboss with these. I'm just getting my craft card around the right way. Um, with the embossalicious folders, if it's got embossalicious on the top, that's the emboss. If you want to deboss, it's that side. So we're going to pop that through the machine. So pop that on. So just get my plates together. I need a D and a C and an A plate. So I don't need those two plates at the moment. So just make sure that your sandwich is all level as well, otherwise it will not work. Okay, so I'm going to pop that through the machine. So it takes that. I haven't got to do anything while that's going through. Sorry if it's a little bit noisy, but at least I'm not standing winding, which is great. I'll just get my scoreboard ready. There we go, it's done. So we'll just open this up. And as you can see, you've got that nice textured embossed look on the card. So I'll put the embossing folder to one side now. The next thing we need to do is score this. So just put the plates down there for a minute. So I'm going to score this at five and a half inches in on both ends. So butt it right up with your long side at the top and I'm going to score at five and a half inches. So do it again on the other side. And then I'm going to turn it a half turn 
and do the same again. Doing it at five and a half inches. This then will give it a spine of roughly um, three quarters of an inch. Bring my mat back in. That's now done that, which is nice. Okay, so that's our folder. Now before I do any more, I'm just going to put some ink on here. I'm using um, some Distress Ink here. And the one I've got is called Faded Jeans. So I hope to have my splodge mat. And I'm just going to put that up there. Just going to put some texture over this. Not being too precious with it. Just to give it a bit of blue. I mean, I could go ahead and use cardstock uh, card for this that's patterned in a manly pattern. I didn't have anything handy in my stash and obviously craft is very in at the moment but I just wanted to show you how by using craft card that you can turn it into quite a masculine um, paper just with an embossing folder so if you haven't got any paper in your crafty stash don't feel oh I've got to go and buy something specially just use what you have so if you have some embossing folders um, utilize them so uh, it's just a great way of using your folders for different projects. You haven't got to always think on card making or scrapbooking. So, you know, do feel that you can use these for any type of project. Think outside the box, so to say. So, um, as I say, not just using for card making or scrapbooking. So I'm quite happy with that. how that's looking. You can make it as dark or as light as you wish. Okay, I'm not being too precious as you can see. I'm just giving it a nice uh, covering over there. Okay, I feel quite happy with that. I might put just a bit more down there. That looks like it's got a bit of a, a patch. So there we go. So that's that. That's the cover done. The next thing I'm going to do now is to glue this to our outside cover so the glue can be drying off while we go ahead and do the next part of the project so I'm using my Kalal All Purpose glue here there again this will help to strengthen the project that's why I like using this glue um, you can get it in the States now and Australia and that so it is readily available just take the end off here so I'm just going to put my Kalal all over there again I'm not being too precious about this this will help to strengthen the project up as I say I could go ahead and use double sided tape or um, PVA glue as well so you know, use your glue of choice but I like this because it does help to firm up a project as well because a lot of you that have done my online workshops will see when I do a lot of my stuff and I'm only using cardstock and paper and you say how does that make it sturdy enough it's this glue that does help so I'm going to stick this on this side because then I've got the nice plain side that I can use for the inside so I'm recycling really or upcycling so I'm just going to plonk that on there and then with my fist, I'm just going over it. And all this is doing is dispersing the glue underneath to hit all the parts, which will help disperse the glue. And um, also in all these little ridges and things that have been made by the embossing folder. So it just helps to spread the glue underneath. That's, it. that's not moving about at all now. So I'm just going to leave that to dry for one side for a minute while we cut the next bits, just to give this time to take off. Okay, so I'm just going to leave that flat over there to dry off. So the next thing we need to do is to make our frames. And we're going to make those with the ebosser again. Now I don't have 
a rectangle die in my um, die collection but this then doesn't mean that you can't use this so let me show you how I did mine so let's bring in these are going to be the two frames that we're going to cut now to cut mine I used a square die I don't have a rectangular die but you can do it with a square die and I'm going to show you how but the first thing I'm going to do is I want to score this so let me just put this to one side while I just score around my frames we need to score around three sides of our frame because we're going to have it as a top loading remember so we're just scoring round a quarter of an inch on three sides bit squashed up the corner with the ebosser here but I'm hoping you can see what I'm up to. I will put the measurements on my website on a post so uh, you can always go over to my website and uh, see the instructions for this. Keep coming out the channel. I must have yeah I've got, I've got dust in the ridges which is not helping at all. good fashion I'm going to turn it over and do the same on the opposite side it's quite thick this cardstock and having a bit of dirt in the channels isn't helping so that's one that'd probably be easier to work over this way and do it when we're trying to get off the corner that's a lot easier through the embosser because um, it'll flatten it out again but at least I've got my marking so I can line everything up so this is my die so I want to cut through on the opposite side I get my ruler which is over here I'm just going to make a pencil mark because obviously this is to take a six by four photograph so really you can cut your aperture to take any size photograph you wish but I'm going to come in at half inch each and just purely to make it nice and even and obviously once one is um, marked up you're away so let's just uh, put this in place now normally I would leave the magnetic sides or the magnetic plate to hold my die but because I want this to be quite precise like this side inwards is going to be two it's not going to be half inch each side I need to come in about three quarters of an inch let me just remark that on that side there on there because I want to be quite precise I am going to use some low tack masking tape just to position this for me because obviously I don't want it to move around when I turn it over so I'm just going to put a little bit of tape just on one part because that will just hold it into place now obviously if I cut it like this I'm going to end up with marks on my mat this is where I need to just turn it over as you can see I nearly made a fridge magnet here as well but it didn't quite go through still okay so luckily I was all right there so I just pop this through the ebosser as I say I don't have a rectangular die if you do all well and good but I'm going to pop this through so I've got my sandwich you'll hear a bit of crunching while it starts to go through but 
Don't be afraid of that at all. You measure this one up while we're waiting. So just measure this one up. I'll do it in the reverse. It does make that crunching as it's starting to cut, but do not panic. Okay, that's stopped now. It's gone through the other side. So I can carry on marking up. And it doesn't uh, worry at all then. Okay, so that's that other one marked up, ready to go. So let's bring this one out and have a look and see what we've got. So that's my square, but obviously I want to make a rectangle. So take that square out of the way. You can keep that. That can always do as a matting layer for another project. What I then do is I line this up with this piece at the bottom here. So I'm lining it up with the pencil mark that I made, making sure it's in the middle. Flip it over again. Now don't worry that I've got nothing on here, it won't hurt. All it's going to do is to cut into the mat, so do not panic at all. So we'll pop that through again. wait for the crunching to happen and then this is how you actually make your your frame for another project so there's my first frame with my rectangular aperture so let's just get this one all lined up and we can be cutting that while I start inking and marking this through start at the top here where my pencil lines are line up all your plates ready as I say if you don't have an e-bosser or a die cutting machine you can still do this project all you'd have to do is to obviously pencil line an aperture out and cut it with your craft knife so I'm just going to go ahead now and fold my score line finished on that one so let me just uh, it's a great thing about this machine you can be getting on with other jobs while it's doing its job so which is great so we'll just take that one out put that to one side to use at a later date line this one up Holding my slides in ready on there. That's just using a square die to make a rectangular um, aperture. Okay, so that's using the e-bosser, which is a great little machine. Absolutely love mine. So we'll go ahead now. I've folded my sides in. So 
we'll just do the same on this one and this is where we're going to stick the tape for our picture frame now I've made this frame to take six by four photographs but obviously if you wanted to add bigger photographs like seven by five or if you wanted to make smaller photographs you can as well I'm just giving you the ideas and then you can adapt the frame to take whatever size photographs you wish really so I'm going to get my scissors and just mitre my corners so I'm just going straight across the corners there that means when they're in like that you've got a nice mitre so the corners sit better okay same on that one. Alright, let's move that to one side. That rubbish, don't need that. Put that in the bin. I'm going to put my tape round here now. I'm just using some red line tape here purely because um, this cardstock is quite thick. Um, being a picture frame, and a gift I don't want it to fall apart either so that is why I'm using the red line you could use wet glue not a problem at all what you would have to do is allow time for your wet glue to take off which you might have to um, use clips and things to try and hold it so personally if I was you I would stick to double-sided tape for this part of the project that's only just from finding these things out myself so let's bring that down there that's one and do the same with this one now if your tape isn't the right measurement like my tapes fit in nicely along here another quick um, tip you could do is if yours is half inch you could do your lip measurement to be half inch to take your tape so these there again are just little tricks that you can do you don't have to do everything as I've done them it just gives you that little bit of leeway and I'm just telling you about these little tricks that you can do so uh, great for when you're putting these projects together so as I say this is a quick project to do I'm doing it in real time here with you even down to the die cutting and the gluing so uh, you're seeing exactly how it's working so they're all ready to go okay next thing I need to do is to bring my boarding which is looking nice and dry now I do need to now rescore this so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it first. So all I'm doing is cutting right the way around the edge. I'm going close up to the original that we put through the um, e-bosser with the embossing folder. So if you haven't got an e-bosser and you wanted to put a cover on this, you could go ahead and use the faux leather cover that I've done with you for a I've done that for a few projects now and I've got a video tutorial on that I'll put the link for the bottom on there as well for that at the bottom of this video at the end so you can uh, see that so we don't need any of that that can all go out the way so I'm going to go ahead now and rescore my my lines Now it's going to take a little bit of, I'm putting quite a lot of pressure because I'm going through to quite a thick card underneath. I've got the line there now and I'm double scoring as you can see. Okay, I'm going to do the same again with this side. matting we can just bend that 
to give that a bit of swing that down. Now I'm making this frame into a man's frame for Father's Day because in the UK here, Father's Day is in a couple of weeks. So as you can see, this is going to be a really quick project you can put together. So you can do for the kids to put pictures in. But you could make this feminine as well for a lady as well. So it's a great gift to give away. Okay, I'm just checking around my edges for if I've got enough. It's all the glue's gone right around the edges and I'm happy with that. Yeah. So now we're going to go ahead and do a bit more inking. So I'm going to ink around the edges of this. Just to tie everything in. I'm just going right around the edges and then we'll do some stamping as well just by coming in the edges it just uh, takes the craft off the um, paper as well so you know if you have got pattern paper you want to use pattern paper feel free but if you haven't and you need to get a quick project together something like this for Father's Day don't panic you know you can turn card into anything you want really with some ink and some stamps I'm just going to bend this back on itself because I want to get that middle bit there done it as well I'm just going to run my pad down there just because I think it looks nice and then right around these edges I'm given a really good dose of ink because obviously I stuck two bits of craft together I want to get a nice lot of glue right on these edges. So as I say, the colour I'm using here is faded jeans. You know, if your dad's favourite colour is green, use a green one. Does not matter at all. This is just giving you the idea for you to then turn this into your own project. So that's our folder already. Okay. Now we need to do our frames. So we can bring these in. I'm going to just ink down the edges again with these. So I'm just going in on the edge just to take that bit of just cut craft look off there. go in on the inside as well now another thing you could do is if you wanted to make it um, you know a bit more substantial you could always add some acetate to the front so if you didn't want to have your photographs marked or if you were putting some really old pictures in for your dad say you found some nice pictures of when him and your mum were courting or something and they were the originals you could always put acetate cover and I would stick that on first before you go any further but I'm not going to be doing that because I'm just using some pictures that I will digitally print off the computer to put in so we'll just do the same with the frame we've got here so the sky's the limit really once you start um, playing with these type of projects and I'm sure you'll all come up with some lovely ideas to put on them as well so it's very quick to do as you can see just go around the inside again just finish that off I'll try and get a female like feminine one done and then you can see the comparison I'll get one done and put on my Facebook page when I get time. So that's my two frames done there. Now another thing I'm going to do before I put my ink away is they're all ready to go. And I've got this. But on my original, I stamped as well. Now this is something else you can do on craft. I've just got a clock stamp here. And I'm just using my Distress Ink Pad for this. I'm just going to randomly stamp some clocks on here just to take the plainness off so this is another little trick you can do 
so don't feel just because you've got plain cardstock it doesn't look special enough because it will and by using the distress ink again it doesn't matter if it's not perfect so I'm just going to ink some of these along here you can double stamp to give them a more faded look or you can do some originals with the one stamp so as I say just let your imagination now take over now if your dad's into cars and you've got a car stamp fine and this is the thing another thing you know if they're into a particular hobby and you've got a stamp that will go with that hobby great absolutely perfect so uh, but i'm just putting clocks on here because they can be quite um neutral really they fit anybody's style don't they so uh, that's why i'm putting the clocks on but as you can see i'm being quite random with the stamping not too uniformed not too perfect using the distress ink which gives it a more muted look as well so it hasn't got to be perfect at all bring some coming down here as well and I'll just bring a couple more over there because the frames have got to come in okay let's have a look at that now so these are where the frames are going to go so you don't actually see a lot of the clocks but you can see it behind which just gives it the idea and of course then you're going to have the pictures in there now, I could go ahead and stamp all over the whole thing but I don't want to because to me that's just a waste because I'm going to be putting photographs behind but if you wanted to go ahead you could go ahead and stamp a few more bits like this in and then uh, you've got a background if you wished let me just put one more there see then you've got a background but I'm not going to do any of that today so that's just stamping with your distress ink again so something else you can do with that so we've done quite a few techniques on this project now so let's go ahead and get this all put together so I'm going to do my butterfly wings as you know I like to do let me get my pad in my knife in to do my so let's just bring this in get this off here the trouble once this ta red tape gets under the lights here it uh, doesn't want to do what you want it to do it goes really sticky and as you know it's sticky at the best of times stick into my craft knife now nope we're off yet so I'm just going to bend those and stick those to the side and I call these angel wings because I find it just an easier way of uh, applying this now if you're not confident about lining anything up quick top tip is lay it the other way like I've just done here and then what I'm going to do I've got a pencil here but a bit of my pencil go there it is. I'm just going to do a pencil line, but I'm just going to do it on the inside there because you're not going to see that line. Then I know that is where I've got to line this up. So I'm going to take this bottom one totally off now. If I can get it off. That's it. Right, that's off. Let's put that other way. Bring my two angel wings together. Now, I'm lining that up with my line at the bottom and I'm just going to tuck this bottom one in okay and then I'm just going to tuck these sides in okay just line and take your time with this as I say if you don't feel very confident about lining it up do draw yourself some pencil lines because you can rub them off after it's not a problem okay and I'm just going to pull that one along use my burn folder make sure I've got a good stick down on there and then again on this side 
okay don't worry if that's walking up a bit like that it's just where we put the ink on once everything's dry it will flatten back down again so let's do the same again on this one just to do it with you so I'm just lining this up okay to take the two sides off first my border at this bottom in pull that side off that's now down so that's now starting to look like that ready to slide my pictures in at the back there now on the original as you saw I also stamped myself an extra clock on some of the cardstock that I had left and I've also gone ahead and I've cut some little letters out. This is for the children's grandpa and he likes to be called grandpa so this is another way that you can personalise your presents as to what people like to be called so you're not uh, I've got some letters missing I've lost my N oh dear I've lost my N where's it gone that's a bit of a shame I'll put it under there I've got that N missing oh dear 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 I'll have to do another one by the look of it Right, let me do another one with you because I've got an N missing for Grandpa. Right, let me show you what I did then for this. This is um, Clarity Stamps letters that I've used for this. So, these are great um, stamps to use. And I've just used Blue Stays On for this. So, what I did was ink my square. That then comes off, and then it's my N that's missing, isn't it? I'll find it when I finish filming, you see. But never mind, we'll make another one. So, ink my N up, and line it up, and that's that done. So that's the Clarity Stamp, um, I think they're called can't think what she calls them. I think they're just called letterbox. I've had them ages, but they're brilliant, absolutely brilliant stamps and perfect for this. So that's clarity stamps that I've used there. And then what I did was I cut these out. This is where these there again. Something so plain on a little piece of a craft card. That's why I never throw all these little bits away. And often when you go and buy letters, you've never got the letter that you want. So this is where you can personalise again your own um, things. Now to stick all this down, I'm going to use some Kalal glue here. This is the 3D glue that I've got here. This comes with a syringe. And I think I need to fill my syringe up. Because I want these to stand a bit proud um, to come up. So where did I put my syringe? Well, I had it out and after oh, here it is here's my syringe right, I'm not going to have enough in there to start with but we can crack on with this 
so it's silicon glue really so I'm going to position these down here that's the beauty of having your letters like this as well another little tip that you can put put them 3D like this it makes them look a bit different a bit special you're just using up scraps of card that you've got so by just investing in a good stamp set actually you can uh, make your own words up this is another thing you know if you've got children that have got unusual names this is another thing these days with people giving their children unusual names it means you can personalize things so this is just giving this little bit of silicon so it's making it a bit more raised to give a bit more texture to that so this is for grandpa from the children father's day and then the other one I did was for their granddad so I'll just pop that on there I've got three little kisses here as well so I'm just going to pop on here so it's just giving a little bit of dimension to the project pop that behind there lift that one up Here. So this is where you can put them how you like to put them. And then I've just got a clock here as well, which I'm going to pop in this corner. The blob of glue, just to tie it all in. So that's another frame done for Grandpa for Father's Day. So nice little gift. So just wait for that silicon to take off so he can stand it on his side with a couple of pictures of the children in. So a great little gift, very quick to do. I've made this with you and that's taken me 40 minutes to make that. So a very quick project to put together. So there's another one here, this one's for Grandad. So great little gifts, just made out of some cardstock and a little bit, bit of your time and using some embossing and some dyes really and some stamps so great gifts for father's day so that's my little frames and then if you wanted some other ideas for father's day for things i've made we've got the tri shutter card that i made earlier in the the year you can make one of those for father's day this was just made out of scraps of um pattern paper that i had left over from the tropology um paper collection I did when I did the handbag so that's a slider card that you can make another great gift for Father's Day um, if you haven't got an embossing folder and you wanted to make one of these you could always add the faux leather cover on this project here so you could always add a faux leather project uh, cover on there and here I've just made a little notebook just bought a cheap notebook from the supermarket and added a faux leather cover to it and I've also done a video on that so I'll put the link to that as well so I'll put the link to the videos for these projects if you wanted some more ideas for Father's Day as I say it'd be Father's Day here in the UK in a couple of weeks another nice project that I've done for Father's Day that um, I think is nice because the colours are perfect was the flip desktop um, album that we made here I'll just move that to one side because the glue is wet. Uh, this was the Flip Desktop album. So there again, another great gift because the colours are perfect for men. And it's quite nice that they can stand this on their desk in their office or their office space at home or where they work. And there's photographs there of the children or you or the family to uh, have to keep. So there's quite a few ideas there for Father's Day. So if you're in the UK and you're wanting some ideas just pop over to my website and there's a few ideas there for father's day to make some gifts but this was the little photo frame that i've just made with you in 40 minutes so i do hope you've liked this little project this just giving you an idea and then you can add on your own little and um, extras and get your let your inspiration take over so i'm dawn from dawn's inspirations thank you for watching the video tutorial and I'll put the measurements for this over on my website, www.dawnsinspirations.com. Thank you for watching.
Bye-bye for now.